Sakazuki is a blue and black deck that is said to be the strongest contender in the upcoming OPO5 meta. Sakazuki has been performing amazingly over in Southeast Asia, which likely means that the same is going to be happening in the West. The deck revolves around a number of cost reducing cards alongside other cards that can then remove these reduced cards with ease. Whenever Sakazuki attacks, you can lower the cost of one of your opponent's characters by one. On top of that, he has a second ability that allows you to discard a card in order to draw a card. The disc Card and draw helps you to fill up your graveyard on top of helping you dig for pieces that you might be missing in your combo or to simply get another counter piece into your hand. You can safely trash 3 cost cards like Hina or Tashiki with the effect because you can bring them back with other cards in your deck. Since the deck is quite low on counters you can even discard some high cost cards if they are dead in hand and you need some extra counters if need be. To understand the Sakazuki deck I personally think it's best to strip it all down to the very basics and by that I mean I'll go over every card grouping them by function so you can easily get an idea what does what and why. Hopefully by doing so when you draw your first Sakazuki hand you'll roughly know what you're looking at instead of just being completely in the dark. So first of all let's go over the cost producing cards. We have Tsuru, Tashigi, Hina, Kuzan, Ice Age and Great Eruption. Tsuru, Tashigi and Great Eruption reduce the cards by 2. Swing Great Eruption do this on play. Tashiki however does this as an activated ability by resting the card. He now reduces the cost of cards by 4 on play which is very good. Kuzan can also reduce the cost of cards by 4 however only when he is attacking. Because Kuzan does not have rush that does mean that it doesn't combo as well with our instant removal engines. Ice Age is our dedicated event to lower the cost of cards by 5. Next let's cover the removal cards. We have 4. Raplucci, Kobe, Blue Boss Lino and Hound Blaze. Raplucci is the most important of the lot because it potentially lets you remove two cards at once. On play you cycle three cards from your graveyard back on the bottom of your deck and then you knock out a card with a cost of two or less and then another one with a cost of one or less. On Blaze gives you a 3000 attack boost to one of your characters or your leader. You can also remove a two or lower cost card on top of that. Kobe lets you treasure card from hand to knock out a three or less cost card and finally Boss Lino lets you put a four or less cost card on the bottom of the opponent's deck. Since Boslino is a 7 cost card, it combos nicely with Hina and Sakazuki's attack ability to be able to get rid of a 9 cost card on a 10 done turn. Our dedicated blockers in the deck are the 4 cost Boslino, Bartolomeo and Rebecca. Bosolino is grey because it cannot be knocked up by effects making it very important as a blocker in the late game and also to keep pieces like Kuzan alive efficiently. Bartolomeo is just a cheap blocker but it also doubles as a 2k counter which makes it kind of like a semi staple in the deck. Rebecca even though it's a zero power blocker it lets you cycle back a card from your graveyard back to the hand and then play a trio lower cost card straight after that which brings us to card advantage and searches. Brand new adds a navy card from the top tree to your hand and then the rest to the graveyard. Since some cards in our deck like Raplucci require us to cycle some cards back into the deck this card helps us to stock up our graveyard with resources so we never run out. Mancheri lets you add a 3 to 5 cost character from your graveyard to your hand. This does cost 1 done but it's basically a 1 done draw a card and you can even choose which one you want. Rebecca on play like I mentioned earlier lets you add a 3 to 7 cost from your trash to your hand and then lets you play a 3 or lower cost character from your hand for free. Even though this card comes into play tapped this does mean it combos very nicely with cards like Hina to be able to on demand reduce the cost by 4 of any character on the field if need be. Kuzan, when you play it, it draws a card. Kaido draws you 4 cards on play if your opponent has 3 or less life and this latter one is a huge tempo swing, especially since it leaves a 12k body behind as well. All triggers in the deck are linked to your event cards, Harm, Blaze, Ice Age and Great Eruption. Harm, Blaze and Ice Age are similar because they help you to remove a 3 or less cost card from the field while Great Eruption forces your opponent to discard a card. The 2k counters in this deck are quite limited and one of the weaknesses of Sakazuki, we only have Tashiki, Tsura and Bartolomeo, but thanks to our graveyard recursion we can sometimes put one of them back into the hand if need be. As for 1k counters we have Mancheri, Rebecca, Brand New, Kobe and the Black Porcelino, but usually you don't really want to use these for that counter effect. The deck has a lot of combo potential with Rebecca being the glue that holds it all together. Since Rebecca can 
basically instantly revive a tree cast card. You can, for example, bring a Hina back from your graveyard into your hand and then instantly play it to lower the cost of one of your opponent's characters. Follow that up with a Sakasuki attack to further lower something alongside a Rob Lucci play after that, and you're potentially removing two cards at once. Mancha really makes the Rebecca combo even spicier because this card can bring back Rebecca herself. So in the very late game, you can play Mancheri, activate it to bring the Rebecca back to your hand, play Rebecca to revive Hina, lowering the cost of one of your opponent's cards, then attack with Sakazuki and play the Rob Lucci for a massive tempo swing. Doing this with just two cards, you get yourself a blocker, a 5k body, a 6k body, Mancherry tap that the opponent has to deal with, and one or two removal. So theoretically, this is a plus four value in terms of card advantage. The deck I showed today is of course one of the many ways to build Sakazuki, and is commonly referred to as the Sakazuki combo deck. Instead of combo, you could focus on building a deck that focuses more on high value plays like Mihawk or Sabos, but it all depends on your local meta and the playstyle that you prefer. Looking at statistics, I think the combo version of the deck is going to be the stronger one of the two in the upcoming meta, hence that I showcased this particular deck instead of the other in this guide. Anyway, I hope this quick one piece guide was useful to you and if it was, please let me know by hitting that like button, leaving a comment down below and subscribing to the channel. If you enjoy TCG content like this, you can always support me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash Gaming and shoot me a private message over there letting me know that you joined because of the One Piece content. Doing so will make sure that I continue to invest my resources and funds into One Piece guides instead of other card games for example. It is my dream to continue to create TCG content full time and I cannot do it without your help. Regardless, thanks a lot for watching this video to the very end and I hope you have a great day and a ton of fun playing Sakazuki in the upcoming OPO5 meta.